When RTX 20 was first announced, Nvidia stated that ray tracing was going to be the holy grail of graphics, and certainly they were not the only ones saying that. Ray tracing at the time was considered the next big thing in graphics, and honestly, I think this is proving to be true. Ray tracing and path tracing have led to some extremely impressive visuals, for example, Control and Cyberpunk, particularly with the patches. Sure, not all games are as transformative as this, but oftentimes they are extremely visually impressive. The only problem with ray tracing, of course, is that frame rate does take a considerable kick or free to the shin. The main reason, of course, is that it's very expensive to run. AMD, however, are working on various methods to improve this, along with other rivals like NVIDIA. And there is an extremely, very interesting piece of research that uh, AMD have published that I really want to take you guys through. So let's just get some basics out of the way. GPUs right now essentially leverage the Monte Carlo method of ray tracing. This is not new and Monte Carlo has been around for quite some time now. I'm not going to do an in-depth analysis of Monte Carlo because quite frankly it's well outside the scope of this quick video and I've also covered it in the past a lot of times but this is basically studied for decades at this point. But the main reason that we've seen games be able to run real-time ray tracing is because of modern GPUs. Basically speaking, modern GPUs use a ray tracing cores. Now these ray tracing cores basically cast rays into the scene which along with other things which we'll discuss in just a moment allows the GPU to illuminate the scene accurately. So what essentially happens is rays are cast into the scene and it figures out where various geometry and other objects are in the scene along of course with things like light sources relative to the position of the camera. So you have the primary um, light source, which of course hits whatever object, and then that object may reflect light to something else, cast various uh, colors onto that object, obviously create shadows, and so on and so on. Now, sometimes, of course, it will also just send that light outside of the camera. But the ray tracing cores also work in conjunction with BVH, or Bounding Volume Hierarchy. This essentially is some type of sorting mechanism, and it basically figures out what the rays are intersecting with in terms of the scene, and therefore it can essentially figure out, well, okay, with all of this information, here's what we need to do when the actual sh scene is being shaded. With both AMD and NVIDIA hardware, ray tracing is run on specific hardware within the GPU. For example, RDNA 2, it basically leveraged the TMUs or texture mapping units. But as of the time I'm recording this, true BVH traversal acceleration, in other words, the part that isn't the rays being sent into the scene, but the actual figuring out what's going on in terms of the hierarchy of the scene, the sorting of it, that was specific to NVIDIA. There was like dedicated silicon. RDNA 3 did do a number of things to improve this, but basically speaking, King, with, for example, RX 6000 series, BVH was essentially calculated using, well, basically data onto the uh, onto the uh, FP32 units. Anyway, ray tracing is very irregular and essentially it can be very sporadic because obviously you don't know exactly what's going on. The scene's complexity can change a lot. But AMD are looking to fix this with research and the research is utilizing a neural network. These things are becoming pervasive, and honestly, I think they're going to become very much part and parcel of a lot of stuff in graphics, not just this. According to the researchers, though, they got a 1.5x times speed up by utilizing neural intersection function, which is the name of this particular technology. Now, there is a very lengthy research document that uh, I'm going to link in the video description, which is on GPU Open. This is actually where, of course, all of this stuff is explained, and I would highly encourage you, if you are of the technical mind, please read over it. I'm going to be skipping over a lot of technical stuff, um, because, again, I want this video to be quite digestible for a lot of people, and I want you guys to figure this as like a jumping-off point. Again, there is going to be some stuff here which is not going to be 100% technically accurate, or I'm just going to glaze over something that's really important. And if again, if you are of the technical mindset, I would encourage you to read the original white paper. But anyway, as I said at the very beginning of this video, the whole purpose of ray tracing is to more accurately predict how lighting will affect a scene. With things like, for example, screen space reflections, although there are ways around this, um, if, for example, something falls outside of the screen space, and it's supposed to be reflected, let's say, in a piece of glass or a puddle, it just essentially disappears. We all know about this, and we see it in games quite regularly. Screen space is quite cool, but it has limitations. In ray tracing, though, 
um, essentially what you have is uh, a primary and secondary ray casting. The primary ray casting is not something we're going to discuss too much here because according to the researchers, this method is simply not accurate enough. It causes, well, let's just say visual issues. But the second ray casting, this is much more in line with what NIF is capable of and it's used for things like in this research and where they were using it for direct illumination. So basically you have a top level BVH structure, which is very similar to how a traditional ray tracing pipeline works, but the bottom level, and uh, we'll go more into what this is in just a second, um, which is normally, you know, there, it's basically replaced with NIF. So NIF essentially sits or completely replaces the bottom level structure. The two structures cooperate with one another. Uh, the researchers actually gave a quote. Now, this is a little technical, but again, I will go more into depth of what this actually means. So we only traverse the top level BVH and store the input data when an intersection is found. This step is computationally inexpensive since it only traverses relatively small BVHs and checks intersections with AABBs. After all of the input is gathered, we then, uh, during the traversal stage, we then move on to the neural network. So they run, first of all, the top level BVH, and then they start to run this uh, NIF. It's run, first of all, for the outer and then the inner network sequentially. There's a kernel being executed for feature grid lookups and concatenation of latent vectors, followed by the neural network uh, interference uh, execution, which predicts the status of occlusions. Since we only need to train a single NN, we'll get more into training in a moment, two in total for the inner and outer networks, that can all handle an objects in the scene, this step is effective. So basically what they do is both the BVH as well as the neural network essentially are kept in their own separate kernel executions. For the sake of simplicity here, you can basically think of them as our own programs, quote-unquote, separate threads which are launched on the GPU. The reason they do this is basically for maximum GPU throughput and efficiency and memory and that type of stuff. Um, they can also do things like adjust the thread size, uh, the amount of memory that's used, and so on and so on. This could become very important with things like caches. Now, what they do then is this whole thing can then be trained with ge race generated using the current viewpoint. The exact quote is predefined configuration with a few samples per pixel. Now, there are some problems with this, which I'll get to go into in just a moment, but what about the results? Well, naturally, the team run NIF against standard BVH. And they measured the time in basically runtime. The BVH method leveraged the BVH builder in RDNA3. Meanwhile, RDNA3, they leveraged a neural network using WMMA, or Wave Matrix Multiply Accumulate. The GPU in question was an RX 7900 XTX, according to their statements. Now, again, the speed up is only from the secondary part of the BVH tree. This typically has the most divergences, in other words, they're a lot more complicated to run, but ray casting times is reduced by up to 35%, or they saw an improvement of 1.53x for the statuette scene, which is around 10 million triangles. The team also realized the speed up essentially is proportional to the number of rays needed and the complexity, as you would imagine, of the geometry itself. So, what about the problem and what about the future? Well, the first problem is that it's using the current viewpoint. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, well, what about games because viewpoints can shift? Well, you are correct, my good friend. Um, this is something that would essentially require new training. The team, however, specifically, wow, I can't speak today, specifically stated that this is a future goal. This is not something which is a final solution for the problem. It's more like an interim step for the problem. Um, so this is basically going to be something where they want to incorporate uh, options for dynamic scenes, and it will, of course, improve. As for other things, they've also said that... Uh, there will be also speed up improvements to things like neural networks as the hardware itself improves. So, for example, as they add more hardware or other functions to improve the speed up of neural networks, obviously this itself will also in speed up as well. Now, honestly, AMD are certainly not the only ones who are working, of course, to improve various performance issues with ray tracing. We've seen NVIDIA push things like... Uh, 
well neural radiance caching for example and there is a lot of cool stuff i've also covered in the past the um tiger demo from nvidia which is going to be for stuff like path tracing this is going to be really cool and honestly of course with any tech like this is going to be a few years before it starts to really bear fruit but it's going to be very interesting to see what happens especially when you start to leverage things like upscaling much more powerful gpus in the future I think that we're still quite early in the ray tracing uh, pursuit of like amazing performance. Um, but I do, however, feel that we are going to get there. Intel themselves actually have recently stated that they want ray tracing to be able to be a much more affordable at multiple GPU performance levels. And of course, I just covered them as well. It's going to be very interesting to see how the future uh, shapes up with ray tracing and path tracing. I'm a huge proponent of the technology. I do grant you that uh, if you're not running a high-end GPU, then it's probably not worth enabling ray tracing for the vast majority of time. However, I think that if you are fortunate enough to own like one of the high-end GPUs, like a 7900 XTX or an RTX 4090, especially if you're leveraging tech like, let's say, FSR or DLSS, it's very fun. Um, and again, if you haven't yet played a game like Cyberpunk with uh, the ray tracing capabilities or, uh, of course, Control, I would encourage you guys to at least check it out. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed this video. It's been a bit of an unplanned one. Um, I just felt, felt this was a really cool piece of uh, tech that AMD are working on. And again, I feel that uh, ray tracing is going to be extremely exciting. It's also, go also going to be extremely interesting as well because obviously... The next generation consoles are almost certainly, at least for Microsoft and Sony, going to almost certainly use AMD technology. I mean, I don't know that for a fact. I have not been told by, you know, Sony um, or, you know, Phil Spencer hasn't whispered in my ear that, hey, you know what, whatever the hell the new Xbox is going to be using AMD. But I think it's very likely for a number of very obvious reasons. So I think, you know, at that point, we're going to be a, co a couple more iterations forward in RDNA or whatever the hell the graphics technology is at that point. So I do feel that the next generation of consoles are also going to double down on things like machine learning elements, which, of course, is almost certainly going to benefit from tech like this. It's going to be very interesting. With that said, take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.